So, yeah, two rows of two suns. Man, <clears throat> there's a lot to get through. We're going to do two full rows. We're going to do this row. We've already done these three. Did this one, this one, and this one in previous videos. So we're going to do these two right here. And part, part of the reason is because there's three of these that are the same. So, I mean, if you figure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten knives. Well, if I did this row, I'd only do seven knives. So that's all right, man. We'll do two rows and... I think we can get through it pretty quick. Let's start with this first knife right here. This is a TS-335. And this is a double detent knife. So it's got a detent coming out and a detent going in. It's got a back flipper with excellent jimping on it. Wonderful. And I just love this little knife. As a matter of fact, there's one on the bench right now. This one is titanium and carbon fiber. It's got wonderful carbon fiber. It's got a little bit of milling in it. And so, it I mean, it has kind of a slight texture to it. Um, the other one is micarta on 14C. This one is titanium and not micarta, but carbon fiber, and it's in M390. Yeah, same exact blade shape. Same feel in the hand. And one of the neat things about this as a slip joint or a double detent is that flipper tab because it also, with this jimping on it, acts as a finger guard. So even if that detent breaks like so, it it's pinching down on my finger. The blade can't come over. It's got to go through my finger to get me. It's got a little bit of a choke up spot in here. Same thing. So if you're choked up, I mean, that detent breaks, you're holding on. But this right here, it's actually somewhat of a confident grip on this little dude. And it provides a four finger grip. But yeah, if that detent breaks, it's just, I mean, that's not comfortable. Look, yeah, I mean, I don't wish that on myself, but I'd rather have that than cut fingers. But yeah, this thing's cool. Fidget with it enough, you can get that timing down where you can snap it out, snap it back in. Love it. TS-335, it's carbon fiber, M390, titanium. Pretty cool. Next, this is a TS-344. And it's got, I you know, it's like a Damascus. It's like a G10 Damascus. Carbon fiber, titanium. Look at this full titanium backspacer. Pretty decent clip on it. Runs pretty good. And with the carbon fiber insert like that, it covers the lock bar completely. Yeah, so there's no contact. It's like a liner lock when, in fact, it's a frame lock. See what I'm saying? It's like a frame lock, but, it, but it's a liner lock because you can't really get to it. Yeah, it's got this nice fuller on top that you can deploy with. And that is actually the only way to run this knife. It's through a thumb. And a Spidey Flick. Spidey Flick really being the choice. Hollow Ground M390 blade. Look at this thing. And it's got this rough grind. Like you can even feel it. You can definitely see it. But you can feel it. Moswan Mokhtar. Yeah. Pretty good action. Haven't run it much. But yeah. And ergonomically... Doesn't have a finger guard, so it doesn't, you know, I can't say it's got a confident grip, but man, is this thing comfortable in the hand. Super slicey, can rotate this one, cap it pretty good, and this is the part that I like the most. Man, you can flip this around and Pical carry this knife, Pical grip it, and so you can go in and back. You can do this deal with this knife. Pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, so to wrap up, this one is a TS... 344, Jamaskit, Carbon Fiber, and M390. Yeah, pretty cool knife. Hollow Ground. Next, got uh, some TS uh, 349s. And I've got a couple of different steels. Got this anodized green one. Got an anodized, I don't know, what is this, lightning strike that's going from gold to uh, the dark purple. And the clip is done the same way, but it's opposite. This is gold to purple. This is gold to purple. 
Yeah, it's interesting. But front flipper only. And a nice little chunker of a blade. Good ergonomics. Nice in hand. It's got a little nice little bit of jimping on the back. Yeah. And I also have one in micarta and titanium. So all titanium. This one's titanium with the liners and then the G the I'm sorry, the micarta inlay in there. Yep. Yep, so the, these two are in D2. These are similar, exactly the same, I guess. And then this last one, the green one, I had to get it. It was upgraded steel, and it was in green. So this is the same knife, but it's in M390. So I had to get it. I don't know, am I going to keep all three of these? I mean... I'm kind of in that mode, man, where I get to keep one of a particular model. Yeah, so uh, TS 349s. Yeah, pretty, pretty nice. Good action, too, for a small little knife and a little blade. You wouldn't really, I wouldn't expect this good of action, but these just run wonderfully. Yeah, really cool little piece, man. Look at that drop shot action. A little coaxing to get it going, but man, once it once it goes really hydraulic and just smooth, oh, nice. TS-349, D2, carbon fiber, not carbon fiber, micarta, and then titanium with a bunch of anodizing going on. Uh, next, TS-318, full titanium scales. It's got this interesting layout of backspacers here, nice big pocket clip that runs smooth it's got these big thumb studs this is one of those that i've contemplated knocking those thumb studs down because if you look here they protrude a fair piece beyond these scales and in pocket you know one is digging into your leg the other one's digging into your pants but this is an interesting little piece i got this a long time ago this is a uh, did i already say what it is this is a TS-318 and 14C-28N. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, full titanium. And uh, it's got this interesting pivot system, if I remember. Like, this whole thing comes out like this is an integral, but it's not. It's just kind of interesting. The whole piece is. And uh, this one's got some scratching on it. I put this one to use when I first got it. It went in pocket, carried it, used this knife quite a bit. Yeah. Nice thumb stuck or uh, thumb action. It's got a spidey flick. Yep, good detent. You can use this one choked up here on the front. It's got a great platform for the finger. Yep, pretty, pretty nice. You can choke up here. Or you can pinch grip it and get up here. Good, good cutter. TS 318. Yeah, pretty cool. Next, this is a TS 100. It's in uh, full titanium M390 steel. Yep. Night morning design. It's got it's skeletonized like a like a fish. Pretty cool. And then here in the backspacer it says Tucson. <laughs> How cool, right? Yeah, this is this is definitely it's definitely a collector's piece. It's just unique enough for that kind of status. It's got a great back flipper. I don't remember, but I don't think this thumb flicker is usable. Yeah. Woo! I mean I can get it out there, but wow, do I gotta work. But the interesting thing about this knife, even with all of this going on, this thing's pretty darn comfortable in the hand. And I I think would make a pretty good EDC knife. I mean, definitely a nice, uh, reasonable backup self-defense piece. It's got, it's got a confident grip. Definitely strong, grippy confidence going on here. Look at this needle-sharp, pointy blade. The problem is, it's so unique and so nice, I'd never, I, there's no way I would carry this. End up scratching it up or something. It's just too unique, too cool. 
So it's a, it's a case queen for sure. Super good action on it. TS-100, titanium, and it's an integral. Yeah, I mean, one of the most important features. It's an integral. All that's, all that's milled out of one solid big chunk of titanium. Yeah, that's, there's no way this is going in my pocket. I just get to pull it out, and flick it a few times, hold it, appreciate it like that. And then, whoop, back in the case, man. All right, next. This one's not so old. This one is a fairly new knife. This is, uh, it's got an older model designation. It's a TS-173. It's in D2, or uh, G10 and uh, D2 steel. Let's get the blade out. Look at this blade, man. Whew. It's got this fuller with these holes drilled into it. I mean, it looks daunting just looking at it. So TS-173 D2 steel. And so I dyed these scales purple. They were, I think they were brown, like desert brown or something. And then the the piece on the inside was black. So it was like brown and black. So now it's like a blackish purple and black. Yeah, I mean, I try not to modify these two suns too much, but this one I just got after. And so here's the shocking thing about this TS-173. This thing is amazingly comfortable in hand. I mean, it, it's just stunning. Like when I bought it, I had no idea. I just was unique and I thought, yeah, I got to put one of those in the collection. But in hand, this thing, golly, this thing is, is comfortable and confident and formidable. Wonderful. Yeah, I like it. Good action snappy just needs a little coax to drop and probably would be fall shut if it just got worked out you know what I mean spend some time with it deep carry pocket clip yeah pretty pretty cool on this one TS 173 uh, G10 D2 I like it I like it a lot alright next this is a TS-81, uh, and uh, anode titanium, carbon fiber, and it's all been milled very aggressively. Lots of aggressive milling, even on a pocket clip. Look at this wonderful milling on a pocket clip. Looks like a feather pattern. Super aggressive uh, milling on the edges of the knife. The ridge here, really aggressively milled. Even the backspacer, just cool. Let's get it out of there. It's got this wonderful, aggressive blade. Pointy. Ooh, needle sharp. Yeah, this is TS-81, and it's in M390 steel. Carbon fiber, anodized titanium, M390. Smooth action, snappy deployment. It's about as deep carry of a pocket clip as you can get with a uh, milled clip. It's got a ceramic ball for uh, the retention on the clip. Yeah, pretty cool. TS-81. There's so much milling going on. You feel all this. Even the, even the carbon fibers got ridges and it's all been milled. Try to, yeah, you can see it there. All that's ridged and really aggressive. So in hand, you feel all that. None of it's uncomfortable. It all feels pretty refined. But yeah, very nice. Very, very, very nice. TS-81. Titanium, carbon fiber, M390. Uh, last one in the row is a TS-146 button lock. It's got this little cutout here, this thumb hole if that's what I want to call it. But you can thumb flick off of that, and you can spidey flick off of that. Um, it's got uh, full titanium scales with this really nice carbon or uh, micarta inlays. Soft, pillowy, wonderful. I do remember when I got this knife that it was smelly. Woo! This, uh, 
this my card on here smelled like an old barrel of grease yeah it was it was funky heavy industrial grease smell um and the button mechanism the tuning of it all it needed some tuning but i put a little work into it spent some time on it paid attention to it and man is this thing flawless this thing runs so well and ergonomically it's really comfortable in the hand everything is knocked down wonderfully rounded look how rounded that titanium is it's just all been sanded smoothed off even the micarta same thing that that smoothing that's on the titanium carried right into the uh micarta very comfortable in hand knife and you can choke up a fair piece on it you can get up into here nice confident grip up there definitely back here this is wonderful grip in the back cap that off oh man is this a good grip yeah and that action i mean it's you know as far as button locks go it's definitely an a maybe a plus action look at it and locked up i mean there's no wiggle there's not a little the tiniest little bit of movement in that blade and this thing just runs whoo wonderful ps 146 d2 steel yep night morning design it's got the two two sun emblem here instead of here on the blade pretty cool i like it yep nice very nice piece top of the next row let's keep it moving this is a TS314. And it's got a snappy little detent to it. It's night morning design. TS314. It's in 14C28N. It's a smaller knife. So here I'm three fingers at best on the, on the grip on this. It's got pretty aggressive jimping on the top of that blade. But where this little piece really shines is choked up here if you go here this is a full four finger grip and i mean if you've got to cut over open boxes or anything like that even the pinch grip this little cut out hole here in the blade aids in a pinch grip so you know opening stuff with this little hawk bill it's just slightly curved just a tiniest little bit of curve on there um i don't have anything and eh, maybe here yeah, it's got the tiniest, see it? Just the tiniest little bit of curve in there, making that, I mean, I'm going to call it a hawk's bill just because of the nature of the whole blade of it. But it's reinforced tip down into here. Yeah. And action, I mean, yeah, it's not big knife, wonderful smooth, but, I mean, it's pretty good for such a small knife. Deep carry pocket clip. Yeah. Yeah. Compact fire in the hand right here. Pretty neat. G10 scales. And I think I mentioned it, but it's got 14C steel. Yep. Pretty, pretty cool. Next. This is kind of an odd duck. Um, let me see. I got to catch up to my numbers. I got a lot of numbers going on. It's a 314. This is the 361. Full titanium. It's got 14C 28 inch steel. But, I mean, look at look at the handle on this. Like, I mean, there's some purpose-driven shaping and milling going on here. The interesting thing when I see stuff like this is, does it work? You know, because you can shape a, hand, a knife handle probably any way you want. But on something like this, I mean, it's so purposeful. Is it going to work? But this is a TS-361 and 14C. All right, so let's see. So if I grip this here, back here, to me, that's the normal grip of the knife. I mean, honestly, it's a confident knife. It fits so well in the hand. It's stunning, man. Yeah, excellent jimping up here. It's not combat jimping, but, man, it's solid. Once you lock in, you press down, put some tension down on that, you're locked in. The pinch grip on this blade to cut, I mean, and then it does have the ability. You can get up in here a little bit. Um, the reverse grip on this thing, 
Mm -mm -mm. It locked in. Wow. Yeah, the action. I mean, like like all two suns, really. It's pretty smooth. Smaller. You know, it doesn't have big, smooth knife stuff going on. It's more of a compact knife type hydraulic action, but it's good. Yeah, pretty cool. TS. Let me remind myself. Is this a 361? Is that what I said? Yeah, TS 361. This is a RIA design too. R-I-H-E. Pretty cool. Next. Keep it moving. Alright, this is uh, TS-295. It's full titanium, big, long titanium pocket clip. And look at this Tanto. Come on, man. And then, wonderfully, the flipper tab puts a finger guard on this knife so it ends up with a confident grip. I was so happy for that because this thing feels wonderful in hand. I mean, as a backup self-defense piece... Maybe even a primary self-defense piece. This thing qualifies. D2 steel. Hollow ground blade. It's got that wonderful tanto with a needle tip on it. Full titanium. Pretty light in hand. But it's a full hand. Yeah, it's wonderful. TS-295. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, this is a legit knife for sure. Excellent action. Oh, man, when that thing comes out, blade-centered, when that thing comes out of there, I mean, it means business. It's kind of like racking a shotgun. It's like, bam, that comes out. It's like, what? What was that? Yeah, man, pretty nice. Great access to the lock bar. That also kind of aids in the grip on this knife. Yep. Kind of makes it even more solid. But yeah, this is a favorite. I like it a lot. This is the uh, 295 D2 Steel. Pretty, pretty nice. Next. 295 to the 300. TS 300. Full titanium and it's been fully anodized. It's got the lightning pattern on. It's more of a gold pattern. But it's been polished smooth. I mean, I can see the hints of the uh, milling on this knife down in the titanium. But it's all been polished very smooth. The action on this thing? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Drop shut. Spidey flick is tremendous. The thumb flick is wonderful. Look at this blade, hollow ground, that reinforced tip. I mean, wow. Yeah, definitely a backup self-defense piece. It's in 14C, Moswan Mokhtar. It's got, it's got, yeah, look at it. It's got that ball clip. I don't remember if it runs. I'm actually going to check it. All these knives, I'm going to check this one. I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. No, that thing runs like a Swiss watch. Yeah. But, of course, everything's been polished super slick. Yeah, but look at this thing. Come on. You can choke up. There's a little platform for you there. It's nice. But, here, you know, the pit ball in this one, there's no finger guard. So, if you were to meet resistance going forward, could your fingers come up and over that blade? Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, which isn't a good feature if you're talking about, you know, a self-defense piece, a primary, even a backup. Because, I mean, if you had to go forward with it, I mean, you could end up more hurt than somebody trying to hurt you. Could you reverse flick it or reverse grip it and then cap this end off? Yeah, you could go here. Definitely way more confident. Hopefully your thumb would keep you planted. You know, that kind of thing. But yeah, look at this thing. Whew. This thing's so nice that I can I can honestly admit to the fact that I have put this knife in my cart or on my bid list, I have made offers on countless knives like this, but without the anodizing. You know, to just get a plain titanium one. And I believe that, not the 14C, I believe they're out in M390. 
which, I mean, I you know, I don't know. If I could pick M390 or this 14C, I might pick the 14C. I might. Uh, next, from the 300 to the 319. Uh, this knife is actually currently running. Uh, I've seen it on eBay. On d -Win site, I think the Six Leaf Seller site, this particular knife is, it's on the block, man. It's a TS319. This one is full titanium, carbon fiber inlays, just wonderful carbon fiber. I mean, the knife is just gorgeous. Uh, this one's in 14C. And I think the ones that are selling right now are in M390. Clearly, Tucson has re-released and are selling models that were successful for them, but they're releasing them in M390 instead of the original 14C. I think some of the upgrades are going from D2 to M390 as well. Look at the look at the the little nub of a pocket clip on this thing. So I tested the one. Yeah, I gotta test this one too. I gotta wrap up though. The video's getting long. Yeah, this one runs. It's one hand in, one hand out. Great spidey flick. It's I mean it's not drop shot action. You know, I don't know. Could I look I listen, I bought this knife a long time ago. Could I revisit this knife and the tuning and see if I can't adjust that action a little bit? Yeah, maybe. I'll tell you one of the things that's that's up on this is this blade. It's tall, flat. Like the flat grind goes all the way up to here. Even though this is cut out, I mean, it's it, it's losing a lot of its thickness. So the blade itself is really light. It doesn't have a lot of mass to get it moving. And you can feel it. When you run this action, you can feel it. It's like, oh, that blade is super light. Anyways, uh, what did I say this was? The 319? Did I say Come on, man. I don't remember. 14C. 295. Then the 300. This was the 300. So, yeah, this is the 319. Okay. Next. The 248. Come on. Look at this thing. I mean, yeah, this is, this is one of my top contenders. It really is. This knife is so nice, so comfortable in the hand, so perfect. And and now, listen, it, if you said, hey, I need a hunting knife, would I recommend this knife? No. If you said, hey, I need a work knife, utility knife, something, well, what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to cut open boxes. Every now and then I got a strap. Sometimes I got to, I don't know, you know, I got to get into a paint can or you know what I mean? Like I got to, you know, I got to cut open a, a package that's got batteries in it or whatever. Would I recommend this knife? No. But if you said, hey, I, I, I'm looking for a self-defense knife, maybe a backup or a primary self-defense knife. Would this one make the list? I mean, I think it would for me. Now, again, I'm not a huge fan of the anodizing. I think I'd like to find this knife without the anodizing because the milling this thing's got wonderful milling on it, but it's been polished so that it could be anodized. And I think I'd rather just have the 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 stray, uh, the rough bead blasted or stonewashed titanium uh, that was grippy and rough. Yeah, but oh man, I like this knife, the spear point needle. Yep. 14C steel. I'm totally happy with that. No complaints about that at all. The drop action on this thing. Mm -mm -mm, this thing runs. I don't think I can fail it. Nah. Yeah, this thing's... Man, is it cool. Very nice knife. The TS... Oh, I'm getting confused. I'm so deep, man. TS-248. That's that one. Next. TS-145. Or, no... Yeah, TS-145. It's got a front flipper. Hollow ground. D2 blade. TS-145. Night morning design. Full titanium. It's got a titanium milled pocket clip. Kind of odd, oddball deal. It's got these G10 inserts 
which really brings the weight down on this knife. It's super light knife. Yeah, very light. It's got fuller that on both sides that you can thumb flick and you can spidey flick. And I believe the tuning on this knife was really kind of a compromise for these two actions right here. This thumb and the spidey flick. Yeah, runs wonderfully. The grip in hand, this thing is very comfortable. The pocket clip is poking itself into the situation. But the way that it's made, it was purposefully made, it falls right in between those fingers. So it disappears in there. Uh, you tell me, how did they know? But, I, you know, it's, that's how it's lined up. Look at all this milling on these scales, the backspacer. Outstanding, right? Even up under the spine, nice jimping. It's not quite combat jimping, but it's pretty solid. Can't give this a confident grip. Um, because it doesn't have a finger guard, but you can choke up a little bit on this one, get up in here and it's got this lanyard loop built into the backspacer. I have seen where I've seen notes from quite a few people that said that they ground that off. Uh, it's, you know, even if it's not a feature for me, I'm going to leave it on the knife. Now, I guess if you bought it purposefully, Hey, I'm going to put it in my pocket. I want to use the knife. Maybe you choose to get rid of it. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool knife. Yeah. Not a hollow ground blade. Oof. Thin to win at the, at the edge. Um, TS-145. Yeah. Three to go. TS-228 is up next. So these three are kind of interesting because I actually did a comparison of these three in a video a while back. This is the TS-228. Uh, it's in 14C28N, uh, Jelly Jerry design. There's uh, three ways in. you got this back flipper that is wonderful. I mean, it breaks that blade out like nobody's business. Ugh. Can thumb flick it, but I think I'm locking myself out on that spidey flick. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the spidey flick's a no go for me. I'm not gonna keep trying that. Um, this one was a contender for me for a self defense knife. It's got a wonderful finger guard, excellent ergonomics, reinforced ground tip that is I mean that is a glucose checker of a tip needle and just the grip on this knife for a self-defense piece i mean i dig it i get it like you know if i wanted a serious knife for serious self-defense some people would say well never on a never on a uh on a frame lock or a liner lock or you know i i get it but yeah i i like this one a lot man 14C again, good steel, full titanium, excellent milling, wonderful smooth carbon fiber inserts. Yeah, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. Next. Next to last, this is a TS-186. It's a front flipper, but it does have a spidey flick. And a thumb flick, as long as I get my... <clears throat> my fingers off of this uh, this frame lock. It's a frame lock, but the scale goes over the top. But, I mean, who are we fooling? It's definitely a frame lock. But the spidey flick, who is is that good on this knife? And then you got the, the thumb flick. And like I say, the spidey flick, I just got to stay off of that bar. Yep, ergonomics are pretty good on this knife. Full titanium, this shredded carbon fiber. Look at it. Whew. Some good stuff right there, man. Custom knife level and just wonderful. Oh, is it smooth? It's done really well. Yep. TS-186, Moswan Mokhtar, and it's in M390 steel. I mean, what a cool, wonderful piece. 
Yeah. And it doesn't have a finger guard, but oddly enough, this thing, it's locked down pretty good. Good jimping on the back of the spine of the blade here. I mean, this is a good one. I know I say that a lot, but I, I believe it a lot. All right, last. The last one. This is a TS215, 215. It's titanium, full titanium scales with carbon fiber inlays on both sides. Milling. And it's got a thumb or a spidey flick hole and a front flipper only. No back flipper tab. So I know that takes it off of some people's radar. Really combat jimping right here on this blade. Look at this blade, man. Look at this thing. Whew. This is a Jelly Jerry design. 14C28N steel. This thing is super light. And, I mean, this is another one that I kind of am breaking my rule on this one. There's not a legit finger guard, but just the rest of this knife and how it's contoured and where it lands in my hand back here, where that lands right there, when I put a really strong grip on it, this, for me, is, I mean, it is a dreamy little self-defense knife. I wouldn't use this knife for anything else, like, that tip isn't going to survive much. You know, I don't poke that into a milk carton. You could maybe take that tip off. It is such a finely shaped tip. But, man, if I had to penetrate with this knife. Mm -hmm. Super comfortable in the hand. Everything's been knocked down, milled properly. And this big, wonderful pocket clip. If I remember right, it's been a while since I've handled this one, but this thing runs like a dream. Yeah, one hand in, one hand out. Deep carry, basically. I mean, it leaves just the tip poking out on this knife. Yeah, man, I like this one a lot. I mean, in in the self defense battles, this one this one gets right up there with this hard jimping. It's low enough here, and this one's kind of scalloped that I really get locked in on this knife. I like it. Mm -hmm. Last one, it was a TS215, titanium carbon fiber, 14C28N. All right, two full rows of two sons. And uh, let me wrap up. I appreciate y'all watching. We'll get to these other rows. Uh, this last row is going to be fun because it is nothing but big monsters of the midway. Yeah, look at look at these back over here, man. They're all this back row. They're all double wide trailers, man. Every one of them. Look at this. That's that one. Come on, man. What else? Now I'm just teasing, right? Look at this thing. Yeah. Okay, I might as well listen. If you're still here, look at this thing. I so like this knife. Golly, this thing is so good. Stunning. I don't know what it's good for. I'm just saying, to have it in my collection, to pull it out, put this thing in my hand, <laughs> it's so nice, man. I mean, if they'd make this with a drop point or a clip point blade, I'd be all over it, 100%. But I wouldn't get rid of this one. I like it. Oof. Yeah, there's another big one. Love this little flipper tab on this one. It's a large knife. It's not an extra large like some of these, but it's a large knife. Got this one. Mm, 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 mm. This butt lock right here. Look at that. Look at that grip on that thing. Yeah. Uh, last two. Yeah. That Tucson Y Start model. And then the last one out here. It's uh, this odd lock on this thing. Mmm. I'm pretty sure I have this to where I can flick it out one hand. Yep. There it is. Whew, you want to talk about tuning to get that right in there. There it is. There I got it. It's just timing. And I guess like anything, you got to mess with it. But wow, is that lock up nice. Pretty cool. Very innovative. Odd. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Anyways, man, we'll get to this back row, but we've got what a three three other rows that come before it. So hey, I appreciate y'all watching. That's forty minutes of two sons. Check it out. See ya. <laughs>